What's up, agency owners? Jason Swank here with another great episode of the Smart Agency Masterclass, a podcast for the digital agency owner that wants to scale and grow faster and hear other amazing stories. And today is no different. I have an amazing owner who's going to talk about her story of growing her agency and why behavioral science is important to agencies. So let's go ahead and jump into the show. Hey, Sharin, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jason. Excited to be here. Yep, I'm excited to have you on the show as well. So tell us briefly who you are and what does your agency do? Sure. Um, so I'm Sharin Arezi. I'm the founder and CEO of Next Step. Uh, we are a behavioral marketing agency, which means that we sit at this intersection of using behavioral science and its research methodology uh, to help our clients with their marketing product. And tell us kind of, are you an accidental agency owner or did you have grander visions of to create this agency? Yeah, so actually my background is not marketing nor behavioral science. I'm actually an engineer <laughs> by training, so very, very different. Uh, I, I worked in tech for a number of years um, as an um, electrical engineer in computer science and um, didn't love it. Uh, it just was not my passion. And um, I uh, really wanted to start my own business, didn't quite know what to do. Uh, had this fun period where I even thought about opening a dessert cafe and that lasted about two weeks. Uh, and then I you know, kind of came to my senses of you know, really understanding what my passions are and um, started Next Step uh, largely as a digital design agency. Uh, and that was because um, back when I was in school at Berkeley, um, I competed in a couple of um, business school competitions where, you know, this is this is a while ago, but uh, we were kind of building online websites, et cetera. And I remember just it was so much fun. I, you know, I had um, a lot of fun on it and I thought that it could be a, a good uh, career path. Tell us a little bit more about behavioral science and why is it important for us to pay attention to it? Yeah. So I'm going to just start off with a personal example. Um, so a question for you would be, Jason, do you know what it takes to be healthy? Yes. Somewhat. <laughs> Somewhat. Right. So it's kind of eat your vegetables, exercise a few times, get your sleep, drink your water. Right. Um, but have you ever missed a workout because you were binge watching Netflix? Heck yeah. <laughs> 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 totally. Have you ever grabbed a donut instead of an apple? <laughs> All the time. Uh, because it was just more available. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So I think hopefully what this example in health illustrates and something that we can all relate to as humans is that basically there's kind of this gap between what we know we should do, which is eat your fruits and vegetables, get your sleep, and what we actually end up doing, which is hitting the snooze button and binge watching Netflix and so forth. And it's kind of closing this gap that behavioral science really shines. And so as behavioral scientists, we take into account that people's emotions, their environment, whether it's a digital environment that we find ourselves in online or a physical environment uh, and social factors heavily influence how we make decisions. Um, and the challenge that we see in marketing is that we have this tendency to actually think uh, like economists, meaning that we assume that the users that we're dealing with on the other side are always rational, like Spock. Uh, and, and so if we simply give them more information about the benefits of sleep and exercise, that that will drive their behavior. Uh, and in contrast, um, as behavioral scientists, we recognize that we think of our users lovingly, a little bit more like Homer Simpson. Uh, we are lazy by nature. We have biases. We have heuristics, et cetera. And so we're really thinking about how do we um, nudge Homer Simpson to do what's right for him. Uh, so that might mean designing an alarm clock that moves. Uh, and the only way that you can shut it off is to actually get physically out of bed or designing a mobile app that um, has you pay um, every time you miss a workout to a charity that you don't believe in. Um, so that's really how we think of uh, behavioral science and its relevance in, in the context of um, the marketing world. I think you put science in any kind of topic and it scares people. <laughs> Honestly, right? Like, 
You know, I like your example of the snooze button. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of people that have issues with like, they just hit snooze and they just have a hard time getting up. Um, so how would you, t- how did you, how did you start getting into this and really kind of making, because that's a unique approach because a lot of times agency owners think, well, I'm just going to design a really good ad, but they don't mm-hmm. think about how that, that particular person, they just kind yep. of generalize us all into that one. So yep. how did you, how did you start thinking about that in a different way than everybody else? Yeah. So my personal journey to just discovering the field is um, a a number of years ago, uh, my uh, then boyfriend, now husband, uh, was also a serial entrepreneur, and he was running a series of sleep medicine clinics. And they had um, some of the highest adherence rates to like these really difficult treatment plans, um, like about 79%. And I was like really fascinated. I'm like, how are you getting people to like wear these like really challenging devices all night long um and he shared with me the secret which was that he had read every single behavioral science based book that he could find and was systematically implementing it in the business and that really got me on this quest of like wow what is going on in this field what's out there um so i started like really um, trying to understand what's happening and largely that uh, with behavioral science there's a lot of great research that's happening in academia and Duke and Harvard and all these universities, all trying to understand how as humans we really make decisions. And uh, what I found is that there's actually not a lot of applied behavioral science in the commercial sector happening. And so this really kind of got me inspired to figure out, okay, how do we bring this amazing work out of the research in academia and bring it to the real world and start thinking about its applications in marketing and product and so forth. And so um, we basically developed this research methodology. We call it the science of design. And it's a four part methodology where we are using behavioral science as kind of the backbone um, of you know how we go about trying to understand a situation. Uh, and we do a combination of qualitative and quantitative research um, to really try to figure out, okay, in this specific situation, like let's say in this marketing ad, we're trying to get you know consumers to um, prefer this, you know, say uh, real estate tech solution to choosing a traditional realtor. How do we frame that? And so the starting point for the work is actually, thinking about the over 300 research back principles that exist out there and thinking about, okay, in this particular case, which one of these could be relevant. Uh, we then go out and talk to people and we started kind of getting some meat on the bones of really understanding, okay, we had this hypothesis as an example that people might be motivated by social factors and wanting to adopt this, or they might be motivated by loss or whatnot. And are we finding anything um, in, in talking to people that makes us believe that, hey, this is actually going on or not? Um, and then at that point, we have kind of whittled down uh, to like say a handful, like three or four different hypotheses that could be going on. And then the best part of behavioral science is that we do not pontificate. So we actually go in market, let's say on social, like, you know, let's say Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. We literally do a series of A-B tests, testing different hypotheses that we have in real life around that client situation. And then we measure what do people respond to the best? What type of ad gets them to click? What type of ad gets them to download the solution, et cetera? And then we can come back to our clients and say like, with a high degree of statistical significance, we've proven that when we you know, message based on uh, you know, this um, behavioral science principle of how people make decisions, you can get like this much more, 40% more adoption. Um, and so that allows us to then really help our clients scale with confidence. So unlike traditional marketing, where you're like, we call it the madman approach, you know, people come in, they do some discovery sessions with executives, and then largely it's like somebody sitting in a room having creative ideas and thinking, well, maybe this might work. And then you put it to market and sometimes it works, oftentimes it doesn't, and you really don't know. Um, So we really are trying to kind of de-risk for our clients and understanding what actually works and what doesn't work. Do you have named phases in your methodology that you walk your 
potential prospects through? Uh, the parts about, yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically the science of design methodology that I mentioned has four core uh, elements to it. Um, the first element is what we call a behavioral science assessment. So this means our behavioral science researchers come in and look at how are you currently marketing? And this might mean looking at, let's say, your social ads, your websites, your landing pages, your presentations, et cetera. And then we identify from a behavioral science perspective, what are the gaps that we're seeing? What are the issues that we're seeing? And what are the things that we feel really good saying, hey, just don't do this, do this. There's no need to do research about it. We've kind of seen this work, you know, a hundred times over. Um, this should give you a nice lift. And then at that point, uh, after doing that assessment, we go into the second part of our methodology, which is that qualitative research. This doesn't mean going out talking to a hundred people. We usually get away with talking to only ten or fifteen people. And the reason we get away with that is because we combine it with the third phase, which is our quant. So all we're trying to do in our qual is kind of get some meat on the bone of like, are we directionally right? What's happening with users? And then the real fun part comes into the third part, which is our quant research, where we are actually testing and measuring different hypotheses against each other and figuring out what's working, what's not. Uh, and by the way, these are large numbers, statistically significant uh, results. So uh, we feel very confident that they work. Um, and the final part, which we also are really passionate about is we don't wanna deliver just ideas in a deck to our clients. We wanna make sure that this work sits in customer facing deliverables. So in your ads, in your website. And so that means our creative team of designers and copywriters, et cetera, get involved in incorporating the, the principles um, into um, the work that we're doing for our clients. You know, we were having a conversation in, in the agency mastermind a couple of weeks ago about why they're, why prospects make a decision. And, and this is all based on that, right? It's, and it's all tied emotionally. And I really like how you, you have developed a way that really appeals to, you know, that client's, you know, emotional brain, if you wanted to say, right. right? Exactly. Um, and uh, it's it's really pretty clever. I always tell people too. I, I presume if I had to ask you, your close rate's probably very fairly high of the people that you want to <laughs> attract. I, if I, had to I would hope so. Okay. <laughs> I'm also good at getting my husband to take out the garbage. But there you he, go. He also there knows the stuff. So there's a, <laughs> a true a true yeah. boss. Well, you know, I, and I think I was I was telling a, a group of agencies this before of going. The more you have, like everyone has a methodology, but the more you can break it down and make it easy for someone to follow, and then you can explain it to them, especially in a four-part series, right? Like you just explained to us. Then people are like, oh, I understand how you get results versus, yeah, yeah just give us the money, kind of like the, the madman yeah. error, right? And we'll throw some shit on the wall and see what sticks. But it's really clever of, of how can you take your particular process? That's what I want everybody listening to do is, how can you take your particular process, make it easy for someone to understand of how yep. you're going to get them results rather than just saying, oh, we're a new kind of agency, we think different. Well, don't tell Absolutely. me, show me. And that's what you've done. And, I, uh, and that's what you do for your clients yeah. too. So that, I, I would hope you do that. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And I love you mentioning that because what you just explained there is actually a behavioral science principle. Um, it's called process transparency. There's research behind it. Kayak was one of the original companies that was really successful at doing this. And the general theme is that as humans, we value effort. So if you just come and give me the end result without me having any understanding of the process that you took, I actually don't value it as much. And so what you just mentioned for agency owners is really giving people process transparency into what happens in the background. Um, and, and frankly, the research behind this is fascinating. It actually shows that people are willing to wait longer if you give them an idea of what's happening in the background. That's literally what Kayak did with you know, their engine. Like it would just search and say like, I'm browsing these websites and trying to get you the best deal and so forth. And so um, it, it's a really great way for us to um, you know, get buy-in from our clients as well in, in, in terms of 
um, the effort that goes in and, and why it should be valued. Yeah. The, the other thing I always tell people is, and the way to kind of step that up even more, a lot of agencies lead with marry me right off the bat. And it's a really big risk rather than having a small engagement. Now, a lot of agency owners make the mistake where they go, let me, and this still works, right? Let me go do some work. I'll come back to you and present that to you and and you'll you'll pay for that. But if you can take it up a notch and you can build it with them, now they're going to believe it even more. Uh, And that's what we've always call it our foot in the door offer of going, take something that you're probably already doing for free, slice that up, charge yeah. them, do it with them, and then they'll pay you twice yeah. as much later on. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So you literally had on two or three behavioral science principles with this idea. I'll just mention. And I was horrible in science. Yes. <laughs> no, was, no, you're good. You're good. I was horrible um, in science. So, I should go back and maybe no, I can get an A. You're good. Well, well, it's social sciences, so a little bit different. <laughs> uh, but what you just mentioned is one, the IKEA effect, which is this idea that we um, value things that we effort for. So building an IKEA thing, we actually value it more. So that process of you getting the client to be part of the creation process is leveraging the IKEA effect. Um, Another concept that it's leveraging is called the endowment effect, which is this idea that as humans, we tend to value things that we already own higher than um, things that we don't. So this is why we have a hard time parting with our cars and our homes, because we think it's more valued than what the market is willing to pay. How this is really helpful to agency owners is that when you get a client to feel ownership that they've already started working with you, they, they, they already have that sense of ownership in that relationship. So it's a lot easier to get them to want to continue to get you know more out of the relationship. Well, so, and obviously you're de-risking that for too. Yeah. Well, I mean, especially if you get someone to start something, they want to finish it. They don't want yeah. to kind of give up, exactly. you know, going through. Yeah. So uh, I love this. Well, this has been amazing. Is there anything I didn't ask you that you think would benefit the listeners listening in? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, let's see. Um, I think one thing that we, we, we see and I think it's important is, you know, how is um, the marketing world shifting, right? And why is this stuff necessary? Um, and I think you know, what we see is that, you know, uh, the days of like, just kind of, kind of coming up with the creative jingle, et cetera, or kind of that madman approach, uh, a lot of our clients who are, you know, CMOs and VPs of marketing, et cetera, they're under the gun to produce KPIs and metrics and show that to their madness. And, and so, um, I think what I would probably encourage agency owners to know is uh, how can you not only show, process transparency in terms of the work that you do, but how can you figure out a way to drive um, an understanding of like, what are the reasoning, the logic, the metrics, the facts, the data behind your approach um, so that, you know, your your customers can feel confident that um, this is going to be uh, valuable for their organization. I love it. What uh, What's the agency website? People can go and check out the agency. Yeah, sure. Um, so it's hello, next step. Awesome. Easy enough. Well, uh, thanks so much for coming on the show. And if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you like it, share it out and subscribe. And if you guys want to really take your agency up to the next level and have one of us from our team, look at your agency and really look at what you're doing and help you build a game plan together. I'd love for all of you to go to jasonswank.com slash game plan and uh, go put your information in there. And if we feel we can help you out, we'll jump on and do a game plan where it could possibly change your agency. And until next time, have a swank day.